<clears throat> call to order this meeting of the Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees in regular session on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024 in the boardroom of the Administration Building 3920 Mickey Gilly Boulevard, Pasadena, Texas at 5.30 p.m. Board members present, Mr. Marshall Kendrick, Ms. Nelda Selvin, Ms. Crystal Davila, Mr. Kenny Fernandez, and me, Casey Phelan. Board members absent is Ms. Vicki Morgan. I believe Ms. Paola is running a few minutes late. Let the record indicate that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting is duly called, and that notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The invocation this evening will be given by Ms. Sullivan and the pledges by Mr. Kendrick. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Dear Father, we thank you for our school district, for our, each one of our leaders that bring the message to our students, and we thank you for our students, dear Father. We pray that you would be with us as we discuss the business of this district, lead and guide and direct us to make the right decision. Dear Father, we pray that you would be with our country in the midst of all the turmoil. We ask that you would be with our leaders and give them guidance. Dear Father, we pray that you would be with us as we continue with this meeting. We pray that you would lead and guide and direct us. These things we ask in the name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Public comments according to policy BED local related to items on the open session portion of the agenda. There are no public comments related to this agenda to tonight. We're going to Adjourn to closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 for the purpose of considering the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, or to hear complaints of charges against a public officer or employee unless the individual who is the subject of the deliberation or hearing requests a public hearing concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendation to hire administrative personnel and or superintendent's recommendations related to renewals, non-renewals, and terminations of contracts for professional personnel. 551.071, to consult with district attorneys concerning matters in which the attorney's duty to the district under the Code of Professional Responsibility clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act to seek the advice of, the, of its attorneys about pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer and or the consider legal advice regarding items specifically listed on the agenda. 551.072 for the purpose of discussing the purchase exchange lease or value of real property. We'll reconvene in open session hopefully at 7 p.m. So, I brought two water bottles and then I have that giant thing right there, like with the... <laughs> and then boom. Yes. Okay. Okay. No worries. Don't let me forget. Don't walk out of here. No, no, you just gave me anxiety, so... No, no, no. no. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Tell him you told me to.
about four minutes. I have a habit of leaning, leaning forward like this. Yeah, she just said she was wanting to stuff. Dates. Are there kids tonight? No, we don't. Not today. Okay. Just these yeah, two. The check. This and is then, the uh, week meeting. No yeah. presentations. No, we've had a couple that weren't as quick, so that maybe you're, maybe you're do a quick one. Good answer. Yeah, when you get home, about, about what I expected. Yeah, so by the time you get there, by the time you get that, yeah, then you try, try to then make, mix Norton and comes kind of quick. Yeah. After board meeting nights that way, like, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. We have a police officer here too, Michael. Do <laughs> you feel safe? Yes, I'm sir. Safe. <laughs> well, I thought you might need you need a little assistance there, so I, I feel safe. I'm just glad we could find a creative solution that didn't alter anybody's position. I'm so glad I heard about it. I just talked to her a little yeah. bit about it. If I said, we need to check Who? that before we take a strong position on it because I'm not sure if it's on your Marshal and I are going to talk to her. I said, we'll visit with somebody. She had, so I don't know. I know she has. Yeah. You know, so again, I have a fair little bit of that nuance of information versus. Yeah, so you're the same way. I just did what I was told. Of course, I did. Hopefully, they get away that hill and be better. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, if, if I recall, I, I mean, it says common with any agenda item, any agenda. I've never had heard anything from her. I need to feel know that's what she wants to do, or just, just say consent agenda. Yeah, but she that's what I thought. Say, if you want to improve performance, yes, yes. yes. The students need to see more. Oh, that. Somebody's having fun. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> I don't want you to raise your hand in the middle of that. Could Please, can I? Could you oh, add a toast? Joe. <laughs> and I did read about that. The board member wanted to. Uh, there's some case. There's a in the Open Meetings Act where they, like, there's a case. I don't know. Oh, well, that's not yet. What now, you got a little All right, worried about your hand. Yeah, that creates a mess. Yeah. And I just had, and it may be all right, I promise. I just four minutes. To get out of this, the first time I did it, you you jump. But, but we will by next week. We'll have a firm. Make sure y'all are awake. With me. Yes. We're going to reconvene an open session at 7 p.m. We're going to start with special recognition. All right. Well, welcome, board members. We have some special recognition tonight that we're excited about. I'm going to, no need to introduce, but I'm going to introduce Dr. Kirk Lewis, former PISD superintendent and chairman of the McDonald's Invitational Basketball Tournament. He's got some exciting news. always good to be back among you knowing that it was eight years ago that I no longer had to sit at that desk and <laughs> I still celebrate every February so it's it's a good thing I want to thank you for the opportunity to come here tonight and, and on behalf of the McDonald's Texas Invitational Basketball Tournament it's my privilege to serve as the chair of that organization and work with a 30-member steering committee uh, that group plans and organizes a one of the best basketball tournaments, high school basketball tournaments in Texas, we believe, uh, and it's hosted right here in Pasadena uh, in, in Deer Park with the assistance of our folks and friends in Deer Park. I'm deeply grateful uh, for the com committee's hard work and all that they do. If you're a member of the steering committee and are present here tonight, and I know we have a few of you here, uh, please stand to be recognized real quickly.
amazing work and, and is already beginning now planning for the 2024 tournament. The tournament's success is largely dependent upon contributions uh, made by more than 300 school district and community volunteers. Um, it's, it's amazing to watch them work through the course of the tournament, all the details that the steering committee plans. It's that group of volunteers that make it happen. Every year, the coaches and fans rave about the enthusiasm and support provided by the volunteers makes it uh, feel makes them feel very comfortable in coming, bringing their teams here. They love to participate and always talk about how friendly our people are and how efficient they are in the work that they do. It's particularly true uh, for our out-of-town teams who come a long way to play in our tournament. Our volunteers make all the difference in the world. So tonight, I wanted to, before I present you the check with the money, I wanted to recognize a couple of our volunteers who are here tonight uh, for the outstanding work they do. Uh, the Barry Harris Extra Effort Award went this year to Kyle Ford. Kyle, if you'll stand where you are. <laughs> Kyle is a member of our steering committee from Deer Park and heads up our ticket sales and assists with volunteer training, serves as a site captain in Deer Park. Uh, and just does just about anything we ask him to do. We presented that award to him uh, earlier this month at a Deer Park Education Foundation meeting, so I'm uh, glad that he's here for at least uh, recognition here tonight. Uh, tonight, for our Dollar Hey Good Volunteer of the Year Award, I wanted to recognize Jay Forrest. Jay, if you'll come forward. And center. <laughs> Jay has always been a steady presence as a team captain at Pasadena High School. He served there for many years. His pleasant demeanor and hard work have been appreciated by coaches and fans who attend the games. His calm approach to the work that he does and how he handles the problems that arise, inevitable problems that arise in a tournament, ensures that every unique situation gets handled in a positive way and an efficient way and it reflects well on the tournament and reflects well on our school district. Because of the unique scheduling issues for the tournament on Saturday, uh, Pasadena High School must host two simultaneous games in, in their gym, uh, and it's an added burden for not only him, but for the rest of the staff and, and team there at the front desk, and adds to the complexity of what they do. He embraces the challenge and has never complained about it, uh, he always finds a way to make it work well and stays positive in the process. Jay is an excellent representative for the McDonald's Texas Invitational Basketball Tournament and a credit to PISD. So I wanted to present him with this award tonight. The McDonald's Texas Invitational Basketball Tournament celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2023. During that time, the tournament has grown into one of the most prestigious and largest high school basketball tournaments in, in the state, if not the country. We host 80 teams, 48 boys teams, and 32 girls teams who play just under 200 games over three days in 10 gymnasiums across Pasadena and Deer Park. Each of the boys and girls tournaments are split into two divisions, and enjoy a competitive round of pool play to determine whether they're in the gold or silver or bronze brackets. That ensures some highly competitive games throughout the weekend. Our championship games are streamed uh, live and on delayed broadcast by our district's audiovisual students, gaining state, national, and even international exposure. Through the quality of teams invited to the tournament, it has become one of the nation's premier basketball events and is evidenced by the championship caliber teams and the 50 colleges and universities who typically send scouts and coaches to attend our event. Uh, coaches usually from Louisville, uh, UCLA, Kansas, North Carolina, UConn, University of Houston, Pepperdine, Ohio State, A&M, University of Texas, and of course, Texas Tech. Of course. <laughs> Our tagline is, the road to state starts here. And it's been proven true, proven true many times. 15 times during the 20 year history of our tournament, our champion has gone on to become the eventual state champion. Many of the players who play in our tournament in the past have gone on to notable college and professional basketball careers. 
still the McDonald's Texas Invitational Basketball Tournament is not just a basketball tournament. It is the primary fundraiser for the Pasadena ISD Education Foundation. Over its 20-year history, including this year, the tournament has raised just short of $3.3 million for the education foundations in both Pasadena and Deer Park, about $2.7 million of that in Pasadena. We are extremely grateful for every donation from every sponsor, and I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank the Houston Regional McDonald's restaurants for their continued support as our title sponsor. Um, extremely grateful to Nelly and Maricel Quijano for uh, being instrumental in partnering with the McDonald's group in our tournament. I also know the tournament could not happen without the uh, support of the City of Pasadena, the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce, and the Pasadena Independent School District, and I know how much y'all contribute and to make it a success. So if you are a sponsor of our tournament, um, this year or in the past, please stand or wave or something. I just want people to know that, that there are folks here uh, that do that. As I said earlier, the, the proceeds of the tournament, once expenses are removed, go directly to the Education Foundations in Pasadena and Deer Park ISD. And then uh, on to the teachers and students through grant requests for innovative teaching strategies and materials that will be directly benefiting our students in the classroom. These are requests that go above and beyond what the school or the district budget provides. And I will tell you, our students benefit greatly from your generosity. Uh, the learning opportunities presented within these, within these grants provide uh, needed remediation and enrichment, enabling our students to experience learning in new and creative ways, ways that stick and, and ways that make a difference. This was a record-setting year uh, for the district, uh, for the tournament, uh, with a net income of just under $270,000. Uh, I am deeply grateful for all the sponsors, uh, again, um, and, and we could not do this without you, and it could not be um, uh, as successful as it is without the folks that contribute their financial resources. Uh, we at the tournament and our kids in our district and our teachers owe you a great deal of, of credit and thanks for your support. So to make the presentation uh, tonight, I ask that uh, Emily Ontiveros and uh, Dr. Powell, if you'll come forward, I have a check to give you. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll take it. Boo. That's on record. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. Thank uh, you, Dr. Lewis. Thank you for everything you. and all your support, and we appreciate you. Thanks for everyone for your support of the tournament. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, and I'm sure you're signing up for the next 10 years as well. Maybe five, <laughs> four. <laughs> Thank you for all you do. We have another exciting announcement, and of course, a kickoff to something we've been working on hard here in the district. So Dr. Harrell, if you'll come up, uh, Lita Harrell is going to talk about something we have kicked off with our administrators, and of course, our entire staff will be part of this very soon. Yes, and uh, it is my honor and pleasure to present a Leadership in Action Award to none other than the team of eight that help lead our district and are committed to our community. And so congratulations, Dr. Powell and the members of the board. You are a recipient of a Leadership in Action Award, and we are delighted to honor these exceptional, the exceptional team of eight individuals who've contributed immensely to our community. As a team of eight, your leadership has proven instrumental in navigating the challenges and paving the way for a better district. 
the Leadership in Action Award is aimed to recognize those who inspire others through their actions, are relationship-focused, take pride in their work, and are purpose-driven in all that you do. To commemorate your Leadership in Action, please accept this Leadership Challenge coin. Receiving a challenge coin is a high honor. It is a symbol and keepsake reminder to continue to serve and model leadership. Thank you for your continuous commitment to excellence and dedication to fostering leadership across our district. Thank you for making a remarkable impact. You want to talk about our day coming up? We have a day where we're going to be recognizing those that were nominated. Absolutely. So March the 4th, this Monday, you guys feel free to come and celebrate with us, is Leadership in Action Day. And those folks that were nominated and received a Leadership in Action Award, we are going to honor them the red carpet way and um, present them with their leadership coin, as well as the kind words that uh, of their leadership in action. So we're super excited about this upcoming event. Thank you. Thank you. That's what we have for this evening. So we're going to keep moving along, but we are excited about our leadership in action day coming soon. Yes, ma'am. We move on to the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? I move that we approve the consent. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. 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 By Ms. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Personnel section. Mr. President, I move that we approve agenda items A through D. Motion by Ms. Gonzalez. Second by Mr. Fernandez. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? All right. Well, now you get to go. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Collins. Uh, here. has been approved for the position of coordinator of human resources for the remainder of the year. Congratulations. Do you have any family or friends here? <laughs> There's some. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gabriel Flores. Approved for the position of Assistant Director of Fine Arts. Congratulations. Do you have any family or friends? Congratulations. Congratulations. Ashley Collier. <laughs> Ms. Ashley Collier has been approved for the position of principal at Beverly Hills Junior Media. I see you have a crowd, so <laughs> who would you like to introduce? Yes, Congratulations. Congratulations. And 
And last but certainly not least, Mr. Bill McKinn uh, has been assisting, I'm sorry, has been approved for the position of Chief of Police of the Police Department in Pasadena ISD. <laughs> I've never seen you not in uniform, so this is very <laughs> odd. I'm gonna just throw that out there. <laughs> I did not, I was looking and like, where, where, where? Okay, so, yes, I see that. So you have quite the crowd here. Um, who, do you, who did you bring, who would you like to introduce? Privilege that I get to call you chief officially mm -hmm. for the first time. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't shake my hand like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's cutting onions here, all right? Yeah, that's onions. right. I'd like to say, say congratulations to everybody here tonight. We, we, we welcome you to the family if you've been in Pasadena ISD. I mean, let's just continue the, the success that we've had and just continue to build on it. And I like everything you said, so congratulations. At this time, if you want to leave, we're not going to make you stay. You can stay if you want to, but you don't have to. So thank you all for coming, and congratulations again. And there's some special rooms to go to. Yeah, Dr. Lopez. Paging Dr. Lopez. Can't hear you. She can't hear me. Tony. Yeah. Are you gonna help get on? Okay. You gonna? Hey, you look so relaxed, man. I am so relaxed. You ready? <laughs> No, no. I didn't say thing because I look for uniform. Look, 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 look. There he is. It was hard in the interview not to focus. With all the gear on. More time to carry fifty. Carry the extra pounds. Really? Threw probably everybody off. As Gonzalez was saying, I don't recognize you. I'm going to move on to the consent uh, that certified personnel for 2023-2024 school year for information only. Support personnel for the 2023-2024 school year is also for information only. And we move on to the educational section. Public hearing of annual performance report, including the 2022-2023 Texas Academic Performance Report, TARP, or TAPR, sorry. I don't know who is we'll at have the Donna Summers. Dr. Sure Summers. Yes. You'll be happy to know we're not reviewing accountability. Um, we will just <laughs> talk about last year's results. So good evening, school board and Superintendent Powell. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be with you. This evening, we are fulfilling the requirement of Texas Education Code 39.362 to hold a public hearing related to our annual performance report. The TEC requires that the report be posted publicly and must include the following components from last year's results. First of all, PDFs of the Texas Academic Progress Reports as distributed by the agency, including links to financial actual reports. Accreditation status, campus improvement plan performance objectives from that year, violent or criminal offense summary, student performance in post-secondary institutions, progress towards meeting House Bill 3 goals, and links to 2021, 2020, 
two financial actual reports. The communications team has assisted in placing the report on the Pasadena ISD website, as you can see on the screen, um, as required under required postings for accountability. And in some locations, we have three years as um, a new requirement for this particular part of the code. While most of the report components from the 22-23 report were covered in prior board meetings throughout last year and this year, I would like to highlight three items. Uh, item one, looking very specifically at CCMR details, Students cannot be identified as college, career, and military ready unless they graduate. And the class of 2022 celebrated the highest graduation rate ever for Pasadena ISD at 91.3%. And 21-22 graduates increased the college and career readiness by 22% district-wide over the prior year. That is a huge double-digit gain. This increase came from two primary contributions. First of all, there was a 27% increase in students who completed and received credit in college prep course, primarily the Texas College Bridge that has been embedded in our reading and math courses at the senior level. There was also a 12% increase in advanced placement, English language art, testers who earned a passing score on their AP exam. That's another huge double digit gain um, for our AP uh, students. The second item on the other end of the spectrum from our seniors, kindergarten readiness assessments indicate that 17% more Pasadena ISD students were identified as kindergarten ready when they attended PK in the district than seen across the state. And also, in addition, for um, a little bit of touch on staff retention, the average years of experience for our campus leaders, that would be principals and administrators, is at least two years more than the state average. So ours are staying in their roles and not leaving us for two more years than most do across the state. And our teacher turnover rate is 6% lower than the state's, and that increases the gap. The state's slagging us by two more percent than they had the year before. So in addition to our administrators staying with us, uh, we're seeing that our teachers are also staying with us more than they are across the state, um, generally speaking. Um, so this was just to let you know where the report is. Uh, again, it's on the required postings. And to let you know what content it is, it's the same as it's always been, with a few exceptions of adding some multiple years. So does the board have any questions or comments uh, about our 22-23 annual report? Wonderful. Very positive. Great okay. job. Okay. And this is a public hearing, so does the audience have any questions or comments? Good evening, uh, board members, superintendent, and administrators and the public. Uh, my name is Yin Ra Bei. I'm an educator and the Houston area chapter leader of Start School Later. Uh, we are a national organization that brings awareness to teen sleep deprivation when school starts in the 7 o'clock for high school and middle school. And um, starting on a uh, nice note, their rodeo, the Houston rodeo, is starting today. That it's an exciting time for parents and students uh, to go to the rodeo and um, to uh, to try new food, fried foods at the rodeo, and to uh, see the animals there. Well, there's students who work at the concession stands, and they work late, and so they get home late but they still have to go to school at 7.15 in the morning. This is for three, I think about three weeks. And uh, how can less sleep, getting less sleep be good for academic performance? And um, another thing is daylight savings time is coming up. 
Sunday, March 10th, uh, 2 a.m., we will uh, spring forward one hour, and that means students and the public will get one hour less of sleep. Uh, luckily, the stu uh, students will have time to adjust because of spring break. They will get to sleep, uh, to get, uh, get to sleep in instead of having to wake up to go to school. Um, but when they go back to school, they'll have to wake up in the dark. And that's going to be hard for them to wake up. And then when they, when, when they come home, there's more daylight. And so that's going to be hard for them to go to sleep. And then when they wake up and they're tired, how is that going to be good for academics? So uh, this, the Start School Later uh, committee had addressed this a few years ago. And uh, yes, I was disappointed to hear that the administrators was against the decision to start school later. And that is against the um, American Academy of Pediatrics recommendation to start middle and high school no, no earlier than 8.30. Um, Ms. Robbie, so I'm requesting... Can I ask you, but you have a question for Ms. Summers? No, I'm doing a public... Yes, I'm asking if we can start school later for our students so that they can increase their academics. And if the board can put it on the agenda, next week's, next month's agenda, to, to revisit, it's time to revisit starting school later, so forming another committee, because now we have two states in the United States, California and Florida, where high schools start no earlier than 8.30. It is the law. That's my question for you. Thank you, Ms. Robbie. Thank you for your comment. Do we have any other questions or comments? My name is Kevin Chow, a CTHS sophomore and advanced placement student with burdens of homework each week. Imagine yourself as a student spending around 180 school days of th your 365 days waking up at 5 a.m. just to get ready for school. How would you feel? Tired? Maybe unmotivated? Well, that's how I, along with many other students, do feel. What school do you go to? I go to CTHS. Okay. Feel every single school day. Maintaining a good GPA is always essential for us students, but when we don't get that sleep we do need, that can negatively affect our academic performances and concentration during school. By sleeping less, students are retaining less material and are prone to be more sleepy during class. Although many argue that school starting later would just entitle students to stay up later, Science shows that teenage brains are naturally shifting to having a later bedtime and a later rise time as they mature. Yet, middle schools, intermediate, and elementary schools all start later than high schools do. As students get more sleep, grades and test scores will also increase. And... Soon academic performances are higher when schools delay start times than when schools don't. Students will be more alert and more prepared to learn as they get more sleep. Please consider starting school no, no earlier than 8.30 for high school. Thank you for your time, and please give thought to adding later school start times to next month's agenda. Thank you. Anyone else? This evening. Good evening. My name is Ryan Chow. I am a sophomore at CTHS and an advanced placement student. Maybe if school started later, students would go to school more. Have you ever wondered why why some students struggle to make it make it to school on time or even at all? Research consistently show that starting school later improve improved attendance rates. In my experience, I wake up at 5 a.m. every day 
for school for school trying to catch the bus but it's hard to get up because i procrastinate like i would tell myself that i would wake up in a few minutes but then it would turn to 20 minutes or more i get no time to prepare for school trying to catch the bus and it causes me to be late to the bus students tend to oversleep and miss out on school when students are forced to wake up it's hard to i mean when i wake up early it's hard to get out of the bed which could lead to tardiness missing transportation even absence waking up early for school reduces the sleeping hours and makes people sleepy during class affecting academic performance my friends always say they have so much work and struggle to catch up on missing assignments built up by just being absent. Regular attendance is essential for academic success. It isn't about just extra sleep. It can improve better attendance, academic performance, and set up students for success. It would also make students alert and result in better test scores. Please consider put start school later on next month's agenda. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Either side. They're proximity microphones, so either one of them. You have to speak into it. Angela Garcia, I'm with Pasadena Educators Association. I have a question. You said that the teacher turnover rate is 6% lower than the state. Can you tell us what the I do not have that with me right here on hand, but that is an easy thing to find for you, and we will definitely get it to you. Thank you. And I'll make sure to have it next year, too. All right, anybody else? Any other questions for Ms. Summers? All right. Well, thank you to the audience and to the board. This concludes our public hearing on the TAPR and annual report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to the CTE spotlight. Well, good evening, board members and Dr. Powell, and happy National CTE Month. It is always exciting to have an opportunity to share some of the good work taking place in career and technical education. I am happy to report that even with all of the options our high school students have, our enrollment in CTE. Oh, sorry. You're supposed to help me out here, Andrea. Our, en our enrollment in CTE continues to stay at a high level. Um, we are currently serving about 12,500 students district-wide, and those students are led by 170 amazing CTE teachers. We are also fortunate to have programs of study in just about anything a student would be interested in with 26 different options. Culinary, still our most popular, followed closely by health science. And most all of our pathways or programs of study end in one or more industry-based certifications. And our students currently have 74 different certifications available to them. Our teachers work diligently to have students graduate with one or more of these certifications. And while they are a part of CCMR and help with campus and district accountability, the benefits they offer students in terms of job attainment and college acceptance are invaluable. Last year, y'all ready for this? Our students earned a record 4,978 certifications. And that was, yeah, we we're excited about that. We're so close to that 5,000 mark. Um, but that was 453 more than the previous year. And while we are just getting to the busy part of our certification testing, our numbers so far are looking really good. 
So some of our certification highlights from last year include a 220% increase in the number of information technology certifications earned and a 140% increase in the number of veterinary assistant certifications earned. And both of our, the welding certifications our students earned saw double-digit increases. And our welding students, talking about this year, our welding students are on their way to setting a new record as they have already earned 136 American Welding Society or AWS certifications. You guys, we truly have the best instructors around and some very talented and motivated students because these certifications are not easily attained. So equally as important as certifications is involvement in student organizations. And you know that we believe very strongly in our CT organizations because they help students develop leadership skills that will carry over into every aspect of their life. Last year, another record, we had 307 students advance to a state-level competition. And I am excited to say that we will be breaking another record this year because so far we've already had 314 students advance to a state competition with a handful of these competitions that have not yet taken place. So a few exciting highlights from this year include the success our students had at the Pasadena Livestock Show and Rodeo. Their projects generated over $110,000, which was a 26% increase from the previous year. And since that time, these students have participated in multiple prospect shows, in the Fort Worth Stock Show, the San Antonio Livestock Show. And if you look at the screen, uh, that sweet girl in the middle picture is actually a junior FFA member at Pasadena High School. And her Santa Gertrudis Heifer won reserve grand champion at the Fort Worth Stock Show. And then the student to the right of her is an FFA member from Sam Rayburn High School, and she just won grand champion in the open division at the San Antonio Livestock Show. So all of these students will be moving into the Houston Livestock Show this week, so if you are there, please stop by and cheer them on. I know they would love to see you. Well, as you all know, um, the expansion of STEM education through robotics has been something that we have really been focused on for the past several years and that just continues to grow. Currently, 85% of all PISD campuses have implemented a robotics program, and that is up by 20% just from this time last year. And this excitement spills over into our summer camps as well as all eight robotics camps that we offer Fill, out, fill up just about as fast as a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> and that is no joke. <laughs> so we love well to see our teachers and students out in the community. And um, you all know Taste of the Town is one of those great events that always has a big CTE presence. And this year, Pasadena High School Culinary entered to compete against area restaurants, and they did a fantastic job. They walked away with a top prize by winning the People's Choice Award with their Texas-style chili and pralines. CTHS Culinary is also making a name for itself across the state by finishing third at the extremely competitive state pro start competition. They were the only ranked team in the entire Houston area, which gives us major bragging rights with our CTE friends in neighboring districts. Our business partners uh, recognize that our PISD welding programs are second to none. And for that reason, they invite them every year to compete against the best welders in the industry at the National Craft Championships. This year, a student from CTHS finished third against industry professionals and, as you can imagine, was offered a job right there on the spot. <laughs> Another group that has made a name for itself throughout the nation is the archery team from Pasadena Memorial. They not only advanced to the national competition for the fourth year in a row, but they continued their winning tradition by placing sixth in the nation. We are so proud of these teachers and students for these successes. Last month, <clears throat> excuse me, you all voted to approve a very generous grant from the U.S. Department of Labor that will allow us to upgrade some equipment and labs as well as add some virtual reality teaching tools to our engineering and health science programs. With these funds, we also plan to purchase two mobile labs that will be used throughout the district to provide engaging hands-on lessons to introduce STEM careers to our students. And we are so thrilled about the opportunity to bring these cutting edge initiatives to our district. 
So I feel like I stand up here every year to present these awards, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about how large our region is. But we once again nominated two of our outstanding CTE teachers for regional awards through the Career and Technical Association of Texas. And once again, CTE administrators throughout the region felt, like we do, that our teachers are the best of the best. So a big congratulations to Brock Wilson, engineering instructor at Sam Rayburn High School, for being named the new CTE Teacher of the Year for the region, which is defined as someone with three to five years of experience. And to Captain Cecil Gray, Maritime Instructor at Lewis Career and Technical High School for being named the CTE Teacher of the Year for our region. These two men are true leaders, and we are so proud of the work that they are doing to promote and strengthen career and technical education. Both of these gentlemen traveled to San Antonio at the beginning of this month to interview for the state title. And I am very proud to announce that Brock Wilson is the new CTE Teacher of the Year for the entire state of Texas. So this honor is well-deserved because of the engaging hands-on lessons he provides his students on a daily basis. From his student-led podcast to his reverse engineering projects, Brock strives to make learning relevant and thought-provoking. And these strategies are what has students flocking to his class. So please join me once again in congratulating Brock Wilson on being named new CTE Teacher of the Year. conclude this evening with a very brief video created around this year's district theme, Coaching for Excellence, that shows what excellence looks like in CTE and reminds us of the important role career and technical education plays in the lives of our students and community and the role that you all play by supporting these programs. Board members and Dr. Powell. Yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> On behalf of myself, my amazing administrative team, our 12,500 students and 170 teachers, thank you for your support of all that we do in career and technical education. We appreciate you. Thank you.
You know, the neat thing about that is every single one of those pictures, every single one of those kids looks so professional. You know, whether it was just, Cute. you awesome. know, they were all wearing the same shirts. Y'all have created something very yeah. special over there. Good job. Thank you. They are rock stars for sure. All right, we're going to consideration possible approval for the Pasadena Independent School District to enter into an interagency co cooperation contract with the Harris County Department of Education to support speech and debate program opportunities. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Ms. Davila. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the interlocal agreement with Houston Community College for internship and externship students so moved motion by Ms. Sullivan second. second by Ms. Davila any discussion all in favor aye Any opposed motion carries consideration of possible approval of the passing ISD extended year program for summer 2024 so moved motion by Mr. Kendrick second, second. Is that Ms. Gonzalez second by Ms. Gonzalez any discussion Dr. Powell. Yes. This looks like such a wonderful summer program, and I know we've had past summer programs. Do we have enough? So we have enough teachers. Unfortunately, as you know about the budget, and you'll hear more next month, we don't have enough opportunity to provide for students. In the past, we've done much more with our ESSER funding or the federal funds that are going away. So this summer will be one of the last summers we can do this unless the state steps up. Steps up. We run a much larger summer program than our neighboring districts, and so it'll be dependent on the state to do their job for us to be able to continue this. I asked this last year, I don't know if we got information on this, but what does it cost per child, I guess, approximately to attend the summer programming? You want to come up, Ms. Dr. Lopez? It depends on the program. Um, and any time that there's a child that shows that they don't have the means to pay, we make arrangements for so you can see, like, there's different charges for robotics versus a initial course. If they're needing it because they were retained, then, of course, that's not a charge, correct? Correct. So what you're saying is if a child cannot pay the $65 tuition fee, that there's ways for, yes. to apply for scholarships, that kind yes. of thing? Yes, we, we take care of our kiddos. <laughs> Thank you. We've always done that in the past, too. Sure. When it comes to these programs, how are they communicated with parents? Because we have some pretty neat programs, not just for students who need the extra help, but some that will get them further than other students. Why? How do we communicate? We typically do that through the campuses. We'll send it to either the campus principal or the counselors, and they get the word out. And then we also do some advertising on our website as well. Yes. Okay. Communications is telling me, yes, we're going to do Facebook as well. And I noticed we had an out-of-district fee included in this. Approximately how many out-of-district students do we have on an annual basis? I don't know the answer to that. Becky, do you know the answer to that? Give me a roundabout. About 50, she's saying, about 50 out-of-district students. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the 2024-2025 academic calendar and designation of waiver days for professional development. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Ms. Gonzalez. Any discussion? So we had this available for DEC to review as well as put it out for our community to vote. And we had the most votes we've ever had in the history of voting. Great. So the choice that is in front of you is the choice that was overwhelmingly the favorite. So what do teachers have to say about this calendar year compared to previous years? Because I know it was different. I yes. liked it, but I want to know what they had to say. 
Um, I don't know that we've gotten specific district feedback. I know they like the fall break or the days that were in the fall. We got positive feedback about that, but I think we'll wait till the end to get an overall perspective. When it came back to DEC, they wanted to see a repeat of that, so obviously it was favorable. Um, there was some discussion about where we place the professional development days and how we use the professional development days versus campus and versus district, so we took that into consideration as well in making this calendar so that was some of the am i leaving out key factors that dec brought up okay any other discussion no i just think it's really neat how i see professional development set on fridays and mondays for families and parents who just kind of take advantage of that i think that's really neat and the kids i mean feedback from my own kids i would say is they really enjoyed having breaks every month really and so that was really nice I think teachers appreciate that, too, as we talked about spring break getting nearer. Mm -hmm. They're ready just as much as the children are. So, so Spring break? Yeah. Well, I guess. <laughs> Help me out. What is there? Someone has a countdown. <laughs> I'm looking right here. Like, Five days, one more eight week. hours, 36 minutes, 22 Richardson, seconds. Richardson, eight days. Thanks. Eight days. That's counting the weekends, too. I it? thought we would get it down to the minute. <laughs> Excellent. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Consideration possible approval of UPS replacement E-rate CSP number 24P-016LP to gray bar for the purchase of 286 cyber-powered UPS for an estimated total amount of $354,000. So move. Motion Second. by Marshall Kendrick. Second by Ms. Gonzalez. So Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration of possible approval of wireless enclosures E-rate CSP number 24P-017LP to NetSync Network Solutions for the purchase of 215 Oberon wireless access point enclosures, say that 10 times fast, for an estimated total of $50,000. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Thank by Mr. Fernandez. Any discussion? Melissa, I hope you know what all this is because it's great to most of us. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the resolutions for the passing ISD cybersecurity mitigation, cybersecurity governance, and planning and Rifle resistant body armor grant application. Move. Motion by Mr. Kendrick. Second. Second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval for J. Frank Doby High School JRTC team members to travel to the national a National High School drill competition in Dayton Beach, Florida on May 3rd through the 6th, 2024. Second. Motion by Mr. Fernandez. Second and, by Ms. Sullivan. And Any these discussion? Are the four young ladies that are going I'm to go. I'm guessing that's Ooh, why that's they're wonderful. here. <laughs> We're so glad you're here. Let's let's do the best part. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, ladies. Have fun. Do, do us proud. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. I want to thank y'all for showing up. Mm -hmm. that, that means a lot. Whenever you show it up, really like is. That. We appreciate it. And you look great. <laughs> You're not wearing heels. Oh, they okay. I got you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job, ladies. Y'all represent us well. Thank you. Yes, you do. Thank you very much. Good luck. We're moving on to student Left. achievements. Left. I hope they jump you in the parking lot, Ken. <laughs> can say that <laughs> student achievements for information only wait about the dr. Kirk Lewis. <laughs> and we're moving on to the financial section Second. consideration possible approval of budget amendments for January 2024 so moved. motion by Ms. Sullivan second second by Ms. Davila any discussion 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of the Texas Connect Resolution Authorizing Participation Agreement. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Ms. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. In the operations section. Consideration possible approval of a non-professional service contract between Pasadena ISD and the City of Pasadena for summer camp transportation services. So moved. So moved. Motion. Motion. Motion by Ms. Gonzalez or Ms. Sullivan. Didn't matter. Ms. Sullivan. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. Fernandez. Y'all talking at the same time. Any discussion? I like seeing partnerships between the city of Pasadena and Pasadena ISD, but it says right here that they're going to be paying us $25 per hour. Is that a, is that a fair amount for us? I'm not sure. It seems a little bit. So is Robert, so is it per bus or is it per hour for the driver? It, it is per hour uh, for the, for each bus. Most of that goes to pay the cost of our drivers to drive the bus plus the fuel and cost. That's the same cost that we charge our schools for the field trips as well. So we were just trying to stay consistent with what we do within the district. I think what we you, see Robin. as a benefit is our kids are engaged in something. If they're not in summer school with us, then they're engaged in something positive within the community. So we see it like you do as a win-win. So it's probably could be a better price on our part or get a little more money. But this yeah. year we're going to continue we're, with we're, this. Next year we may have to look at it with our budget coming. Yeah, we uh, – the most of the students that will be in those programs are our students anyway. So we were trying to keep it consistent in partnership with the city. So, Excellent. All right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 01 for the 2022 bond safety and security project in the credit amount of $30,000. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan, second by Mr. Fernandez. Any discussion? We will take the money. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of final ch change order number 006 for the new maintenance operations and warehouse facility project and the credited amount of $10,761.06. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Mr. Fernandez. Any discussion? Kevin told me this closes out that project. Is that right, Kevin? There we go. Where do you go? Thank Perfect. You. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, financially it closes out. <laughs> they're, they're never closed out. I understand. <laughs> Consideration possible approval of priority projects and funding by the 2017 bond contingency pool in the amount of $177,565. So moved. Motion Thank by you. Ms. Sullivan, second by Ms. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration and possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 02 for the synthetic turf at McGuire Field Project in the credit amount of $48,000. Motion by Mr. Kendrick, second by Mr. Fernandez. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 03 for the synthetic turf at McGuire at McGuire Field Project in the amount of $122,972.50. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Mr. Kendrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of final change order number 02 for the 2022 Bond Auxiliary Stadium track replacement project in the amount of $27,000. So moved. Motion Second. by Mr. Fernandez, seconded by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Consideration possible approval of allowance expenditure authorization, AEA number 156, for the new administration building replacement project in the amount of $26,239. So moved. Motion by Ms. Sullivan. Second. Second by Ms. Gonzalez. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration possible approval of change order number 01 for the 2022 Bond Water Fountain re Retrofit to Bottle Filling Stations Project in the amount of $400,000. Motion by Mr. Kendrick, second by Mr. Fernandez, correct? Any discussion? Kids really love these. I think they're awesome. Absolutely. Very popular among staff and students. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the Stanley Company likes them too. Right. <laughs> Any other discussion? that uh, we have to I wanted y'all to if you get a chance to look at that any other discussion all in favor aye uh, any opposed motion carries the construction updates are for information only miscellaneous section Moving on to the public comments, according to BED Local, related to topics not listed on the agenda, 30-minute allotment. We have one, two, three, four. no, we're done. Oh, okay. Which, what, what is your name? Oh, so you're the first speaker. Okay. Okay, we have one speaker. Okay, let me explain something first before you start. Um, this portion of the public comments is limited to speakers who are addressing items not listed on the open session portion of the agenda for this meeting. We ask that all speakers refrain from using profane or vulgar language. Complaints about an individual student and or employee should seek resolution through the district's grievance process outlined in the applicable Passing ISD board policy, DGBA, FNG, or GF. Along those lines, we ask that speakers respect the privacy rights of others and, in doing so, refrain from naming employees and or students during the, the public comment portion of the agenda. Titles may be used instead. The admonishment goes for positive or negative remarks. Each person will be limited to a maximum of three minutes. And Ms. Davila, can you, or Mr. Fernandez, can you do the time, please? Mr. Fernandez will, will indicate when you have one minute left. Uh, you may begin. Good evening, Pasadena School Board. It is an honor to speak with you tonight. My name is Bao. I'm a sophomore at CTHS as well as the HOSA president. I've thoroughly enjoyed my experience here in Pasadena ISD, and I'm confident it's due to your contribution and dedication to keeping us safe and happy. But there is a problem, and that is that early school times are ruining the health of Pasadena students and endangering student drivers. I'm here because I want to urge you to consider starting school later and adding that as an agenda item for the next board meeting. A study published by the University of Rochester Medical Center found that high school students that started school before 8.30 had higher rates of depression, anxiety, and even obesity. This is alarming and should be a wake-up call for us to prioritize the mental and physical health of our students. Furthermore, starting school later can reduce the risk of car accidents involving teenagers. The Center of Disease Control and Prevention reports that sleep deprivation is one of the most major factors that play a part in car accidents involving teenage drivers. By starting school later, we can help reduce this risk and keep our students safe. Once again, I ask you to consider making school start later as an agenda item for the next board meeting. And I understand that changing school start times is a big decision, which requires a lot of careful consideration. However, I think it's time to prioritize the safety of our students over convenience. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to set the date for the next regular meeting suggested Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Motion by Mr. Fernandez. Second by Ms. Davila. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 8.05 p.m. <laughs>